गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज विजय गुप्ता एंड यूर वॉचिंग बायोलॉजी क्लासेज सो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस क्लास ऑफ बायोलॉजी एज वी नो दैट करेंटली आई एम मेकिंग ऑल माई वीडियोज रिलेटेड टू ह्यूमन स्केलेटल सिस्टम एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई विल चेल यू अबाउट द पैल्विक गर्डल और द हिप गर्डल सो लेट स्टार्ट द वीडियो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज द सिचुएशन ऑफ द पैल्विक गर्डल वेयर द पैल्विक गर्डल इज सिचुएटेड सो द पैल्विक गर्डल इज सिचुएटेड इन द लोअर ट्रंक रीजन of the body as you can see in this diagram this is the pelvic girdle and it is situated in the trunk region and it forms the posterior part of our trunk now this pelvic girdle consists of two halves as you can see in this diagram there are, these are two halves which forms the pelvic girdle and these two halves are formed by the fusion of three bones and each half is known as a coxal bone or a hip bone as you can see the pelvic girdle is a ring like bony structure so it is a ring like it forms a ring from back side to the front so it is the structure which is a ring like structure a bony structure consisting of two halves known as the coxal bones or the hip bones the, these are two halves known as the coxal or the hip bones each is formed by the fusion of three bones so each half of pelvic girdle is made up of three bones as you can see there are three different colors orange brown and green uh, here again orange brown and green so these are three different bones i'll tell you one by one so so the first one is ilium as you can see these two orange colored bone are known as the ilium bones these are the largest bone and form a large area of the pelvic girdle so these bones are known as ilium so it is the uppermost largest bone both are the uppermost and the largest bones of the pelvic girdle it is fused with the ischium and pubis bones and both the ilium bones are fused with the pubis bone as well as the ischium bones the second bone that is green colored bone that is the ischium and this brown colored bone is the pubis or the pubic bone so both the ilium bones are attached with pubis as well as with the ischium now it is attached to the sacrum and what is sacrum as i described before in my last videos that uh, we consist of the our vertebral column so in this vertebral column the lower most part is known as sacrum and coccyx so both the part of vertebral column are attached with the ilium bone of pelvic girdle so here you can see it is the sacrum a part of our vertebral column below the sacrum a coccyx or the tail vertebrae is present as i described in my last video that tail vertebrae or the coccyx is a rudiment form in our body so the both the parts are our vertebral column but in this case in this case of pelvic girdle the ilium bones are attached with the sacrum with the help of a joint that is sacroiliac joint so sacrum and ilium both are fused together with the help of a joint that is sacroiliac joint so it was all about the ilium bones these are the largest bone now the second bone are ischium ischium these green colored bone are known as the ischium so this is the ischium bone it is the lower and back part of the pelvic girdle ischium bones form the back portion or the lower portion of the pelvic girdle i mentioned with the green color it is situated behind the pubic bones as you can see in the diagram of pelvic girdle in front of pelvic girdle the bones which are brown colored these are the pubic bones so in front the pubic bones are situated while in the back side the ischium is situated both the ischium are situated in the back side and the lower side of the pelvic girdle now the last bone is the pubic bones what is the pubic bone pubic bone is also known as pubis it is the located in front of the pelvic girdle so both the pubic bones are located in front it forms the front part of the ring ring means a pelvic girdle is a ring like a structure so pubic bones form the front part of the this ring so these are the pubic bones situated in front of the pelvic girdle the two halves of pubic bones are jointed in the middle as you can see the two halves this half and this half both the halves joint in the middle at the center with the help of a cartilaginous structure and that is known as pubic symphysis so the two halves of the pubic bone are jointed in the middle by an area of cartilage called pubic symphysis what is the pubic symphysis it's a area of cartilage which provide the flexibility to the pelvic girdle with the help of this particular structure we can easily uh, move our legs in any direction 
and this flexibility is more in females and helps during the childbirth so during the childbirth when baby comes out from the uterus then pubic symphysis becomes more flexible and helps in the easy parturition or the delivery so it is a very important area uh, of the pelvic girdle this uh, sky blue colored structure as i told you before that is the pubic symphysis so both the pubic bones are attached with each other in front of the pelvic girdle with the help of a cartilage, cartilage structure known as the pubic symphysis now now we will talk about the different functions uh, before the functions i would like to tell you some important other structures uh, which uh, i could not write here due to lack of space so uh, the first one is these depressions there are two depressions present in the pelvic girdle known as the acetabulum so the acetabulum consists of the head of the femur the leg bone as you can see in this diagram these are the femur bones femur are the largest longest bone of our body and the head of this femur articulates with the pelvic girdle through a pit or a depression which is known as acetabulum so these are two acetabulum in which the leg bone or the femur articulates so it is the important structure of the pelvic girdle now the next is these two large pores these are known as obturator foramen obturator foramen are the largest pores of our body of our skeletal system and different kinds of blood vessels and nerves passes to the lower side of the body inside these obturator foramen so these are the pores present in the lower side of the pelvic girdle through which different blood vessels and nerves passes okay so it was all about the obturator foramen now i will tell you about the different functions of the pelvic girdle so start with number 1 pelvic girdle supports the posterior part of the trunk as you can see the posterior part of the trunk is made up by the pelvic girdle so pelvic girdle supports the posterior part of the trunk legs are attached with the pelvic girdle so it supports our posterior part next is it protects the soft organ of the pelvic cavity now what is the meaning of pelvic cavity as i told you before that uh, pelvic girdle is a ring like structure from back to front it forms a ring like structure so it is a few vacant space that is known as the pelvic cavity or you can say the cavity uh, which is present inside the pelvic girdle is known as the pelvic cavity so in this pelvic cavity different soft organs of our body such as our urinary bladder uterus of female are situated so this bony ring like pelvic girdle protect these soft organs of our body so it protects the soft organs of the pelvic cavity which are situated inside the pelvic cavity such as uterus urinary bladder etc etc now next one is it provides surface for the attachment of the muscles of the leg all the muscles of the leg are attached to the pelvic girdle so the pelvic girdle provide a surface or a space for the attachment of different muscles of the leg now the next is it Uh, in its acetabulum femur bone of the leg articulates as i described before that pelvic girdle consists of these depressions or the pits known as acetabulum and the head of the femur of leg articulates or the joint with these acetabulum so it was all about the functions i hope everything is very clear to you still if you have any type of question any doubt any query you may ask in the comment section so it was all about the pelvic girdle in this video thanks for watching have a good day